be live streaming going forward now from now on every race <clears throat> we will continue to upload the streams uh, to the podcast places so please tell your friends about us get your family involved formula one is the fastest growing sport uh, in the world uh, there's about a hundred million people uh, just got through watching the Austrian Grand Prix. So have all your friends and family become part of it. Welcome Formula One fans and uh, this is the new Formula One News Hour and I'm your host Jonathan Steele and today uh, we have the sprint to the pole for the uh, Austrian uh, Grand Prix in Spielberg, Austria. The weather is a little dodgy. In fact, it's uh, looking at the screen here, it's quite wet. Um, so that's going to make for interesting happenings. Um, so the it, some interesting things yesterday, we had the qualifying yesterday and all of a sudden Sergio Perez, who was um, uh, kicked all the way down to, I think, uh, 11th or 12th. Now he, he had his um, he had his times taken off uh, for some reason. Anyway, it looks like they put him back. And so Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen are starting in first and second. So it's quite interesting the way the sprint to the pole happens. They On a Friday, they do a normal qualifying session. And the qualifying sessions um, are, are, are three, two, and then one. And uh, they're really qualifying for the um, pole uh, position for the sprint and then during the sprint then they're sprinting for the pole for the race tomorrow um, the track looks like it's quite uh, damp so I see the cars have got um, the intermediates on it is not quote unquote raining right now um, they are on the formation lap and, uh, and we can see uh, a fair amount of water uh, it looks like it's pretty chilly as well because uh, everybody's uh, got their uh, got 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 what we would call our winter woolies on, um, but over there, of course, in in Europe, that's it's quite normal uh, at all times of the year where the weather can get pretty cool uh, in the summertime as well, especially up in the in the mountains of uh, Austria and Italy um, and places like that. So. Uh, the distance is 24 laps. Um, there are no mandatory pit stops, and uh, the winner actually gets uh, eight points uh, to, uh, towards the, um, the World Championship. And of course, if you follow Formula One, you know that uh, Max Verstappen is so far ahead that uh, it's, it's not going to be um, uh, much of a, a different, make much of a difference to him. And we've just seen to start off here on the formation lap, Sergio Perez having an issue um, with, uh, with the grip and his wheels locked up and he ended up, I uh, can't see exactly which turn he was on, but he ended up having to go into the runoff area uh, to, to save uh, the car from being damaged. And so uh, the, the grip is going to be an issue uh, today. Um, because the track is wet, uh, the intermediate tires um, uh, give them a fair amount of grip. But the other thing it's going to do, it's going to slow down um, the, uh, the the cars quite a bit. So yesterday during qualifying, if you remember, I always talk about in qualifying, um, they have DRS all the time. So the qualifying laps are, are, are quite fast. And yesterday, I think we're at one 104.4 for Max Verstappen. And we're just about to get this race underway here as the final cars pull into the grid. But um, 104.4, I think, for Max Verstappen yesterday. But we'll see times now today with the intermediate uh, wet tires. We're going to see laps in the 112, 113. So, um, and it looks like we've got one car actually coming into the pits. Uh, maybe a penalty and he had to start from pit lane. Um, haven't seen any news. The only news uh, really that I've seen is um, uh, Lewis Hamilton wants uh, the Formula One guys to slow everything down so that it makes it more competitive, uh, kind of interesting. And the green flag goes out. The, the lights are going. Four, five, they're out and we are off. And uh, Max Verstappen gets a very nice start on his teammate uh, with the clap McLarens behind him. And, um, and what is Sergio Perez doing? It looks like Sergio Perez actually has taken the inside lead away from Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen's taking it back again. 
so that was uh, that was a quite an interesting show. Sergio Perez has come under a lot, a lot of flack lately, um, and for the well, we've just well, having, oh yeah, uh, Max Verstappen had to leave the track to avoid running into Sergio Perez. So he's not going to be happy about that. And we see the Aston Martins moving up quite nicely. So right now we've got, uh, what is Sergio Perez doing? Why is he doing this? He's taking the lead back from Max Verstappen, but that is not going to make uh, Verstappen very happy. To get, back to, to get back to Perez momentarily, something is not right with uh, Verstappen because, whoa, he's got grip issues is the problem because uh, we've just seen Hulkenberg in the Haas uh, take over second place. So that puts Ver, Verstappen back in third place. So um, yeah, we've got uh, quite quite an exciting thing going on right here, right now. Um, and uh, Sorry, I, 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 it was not Perez uh, that was taking the lead, it was Verstappen. Um, I'm having to figure out who, who's who by the, by the helmets. And it's very difficult uh, when they're throwing up so much water to get the ID on the helmets, but yeah, so Verstappen is number one, Hulkenberg is number two, and Perez has slipped back to number three. So to get back to Perez's issues, the last uh, three or four races um, have not been good. He started the year very, very nicely, um, had, a, had a, a couple of podiums, uh, was, was actually very close in the World Championship points. And at some at some point, he was even bragging about that he would actually uh, be the world champion this year. And then all of a sudden, um, he just seems to have lost it. And uh, you know, it, it <clears throat> there's been speculation out there that maybe maybe Red Bull the t the cars are supposed to be supposed to be exactly the same between Verstappen and and uh, Chavez uh, uh, Checo Perez. Sorry, but. Um, it, it's quite obvious um, that something happened with Perez or Perez's car because the last, like I said, the last four or five races, it's not been good. Um, yesterday, like I said, he, he actually, in qualifying, it looks like they gave him the times back. So in qualifying, if you um, go exceed track limits, um, then your time is taken away. And exceeding track limits is when all four wheels are outside the white line of the track. And it did look like uh, on the TV yesterday during qualifying that uh, Perez was going outside track limits. But uh, as it turns out, I guess he wasn't because they've given him that position back. So the top five right now are Verstappen, Hulkenberg, Perez, Sainz, um, and Stroll in the fastest lap. Well, I said 111, 112, or 112, 113. And I was way off because the lap time just, they've just put up is 118. Uh, for Verstappen with the fastest lap. So um, we're going to look take a look here again at the restart. And so I see Verstappen gets off very nicely, but Perez kind of tries to take him and in fact does move past him on the inside. And then Verstappen go, comes back and moves past Perez. In fact, uh, Verstappen goes right off the track right there. He actually had his wheels on the grass. How he did not lose that I'll never know, but uh, anyway, he didn't. And now Verstappen is taking back the lead uh, because of grip issues. Um, and uh, it was Perez that had to leave the track and I thought it was uh, Verstappen. And um, of course it was Perez, but uh, right. So um, Verstappen just got on the team radio and was complaining uh, during the restart that Perez pushed him right off the track, which he did. Um, and that almost gave um, the cause of um, Al Alfa Romeo, not yeah, Alfa Romeo and Hulkenberg. In fact, during that sp that uh, battle there, Hulkenberg did in fact uh, get through. So an amazing start here for um, the Haas team and um, yeah, their advertisers, as, uh, as you've heard me say in, in my podcast the last few times, um, MoneyGrams uh, really got their money's worth out of the uh, advertising, uh, that uh, the sponsorship of that Hulkenberg car. So at the bottom end uh, of the of the uh, track right now, we've got De Vries, Piastri, Sargent, Joe Granu, Valtteri Bottas. That's a real surprise because Bottas, I believe, qualified up then in, in the top. In fact, he was number 10. So that's something must be sadly wrong with the grip on that, on that particular car. Now, of course, all of the cars uh, having grip issues because like I said the track the track although it is wet it is not 
it's not really, really wet. There's quite a bit of spray coming up off the cars. And as they, as they go through the, uh, the, the sprint race, and we've, we're now through lap five of 24, and Verstappen just dropped uh, to 117. So uh, that shows the grip picking up a little bit. But as these cars go along, they will, and it doesn't rain, then um, they're going to slowly dry this track out. Now, whether or not after it'll be dry enough after 24 laps to go to the slick, uh, that would be that would be a, uh, a another another thing. But um, and would, uh, Russell's just coming on Team Radio. Let's see if we can see what he's uh, got to say. He's talking. They didn't show, so um, uh, it, it's difficult uh, to figure out what these guys are saying. If you notice that the last couple of podcasts I've done, I've, I've actually worn headphones and listened to it uh, on my laptop and watching it on TV like I'm doing now. But um, one of the things that I decided was, one, it was too distracting and it would it would cause long pauses that uh, our producer and uh, technical guru, Andre Kuhn, would have to try and uh, cut out of there. So that made his, made his job uh, a lot more difficult. But but also it was still very difficult to uh, to see the um to see the uh um words coming up or hear rather the words coming up on the screen so the other thing we're going live is that, that uh you know this this little room that i do my podcast from um there's something in it that just bugs my ears and my nose and stuff so yeah with going live of course you're going to see all of those little things as i as i have to um take care of that human need of the itch is getting too bad and it's going to it's going to be that way on my right ear in just a little while so um but um uh, so the race right now seems to have settled down. Uh, Verstappen um, is uh, showing the class of the field right now because in six laps, he's right at three seconds ahead uh, of Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg is uh, two seconds uh, ahead of Perez and Perez is 1.1 second. In fact, just dropped to one second um, ahead of uh, Carlos Sainz. So uh, Carlos Sainz, uh, he's outperformed the uh, Ferrari's number one team, and in fact, he's who's he, he's just passing one of the uh, McLarens. Who are sorry, that was Leclerc that just passed uh, Norris um, uh, going through there. I thought it was uh, I thought it was Carlos Sainz, but no. So so um, Leclerc has passed Norris and pushed him back, and Verstappen has just again uh, taken up the fastest lap, and now he's got it down. Uh, what two lap three laps ago we were doing 118 he's at 116 five now so uh, the, the the track is drying out the cars are getting better grip but what I don't understand is why the rest of the field is not uh, experiencing that same uh, type of uh, effect on their cars because uh, Verstappen now has opened up another second on on uh, Hulkenberg and Hulkenberg has opened up three seconds on Perez and um, and Carlos Sainz, I think, uh, is going to move up into third place here, um, probably within, uh, I'd say, a couple of laps. Um, we, we're, we're seven laps in to the 24-lap sprint. Um, the thing I really like about these uh, sprint uh, uh, sprint races for the pole position for the main race is because it adds an extra day of excitement for the for the fans. So. Um, where normally on a Friday you would have um, the the two free practice sessions, um, and and then you on uh, and then Saturday you would get the free practice session and then qualifying. What you end up is you get you you get the two free practice sessions and then you get a qualifying session for this for the sprint race. So that that's an extra a bit of excitement there for the fans, and then of course. Uh, on Saturday here, yeah, they, they, they do have a, a, a free practice in the morning, but then they get a mini race here uh, in the afternoon. So it, it, it's kind of like now they're getting two races for the for the uh, cost of the thrill of one um, for the race tomorrow. But it, for me, it's a really nice format because um, it it, uh, it in some ways it's <laughs> let me rephrase that. It's a nice format. In some ways it's nice, but in some ways, um, like what what's what's flowing out right now is pretty much the way the race is going to go tomorrow unless of course uh, we have dry weather and then then of course it'll be very different because these uh, these intermediate tires do make a big difference um, and let's see whether we've got very interesting we've got both Mercedes all the way down in 13th and 14th position that is a really big surprise that means those cars have pretty much 
the same grip as the as the second team cars. So if you, if you don't know how Formula One works, every team has a main team. So in in, in this case, uh, Red Bull, as an example, is the main team, and uh, the the uh, the junior team is Alfa Tauri. So um, so the 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 the, the Main team cars are usually the ones that are up in the top ten positions, and and the uh, second team uh, cars and in the lower ten. But what's been really interesting and very nice this last two or three weeks is like we've seen like Alex Albon right now in in seventh place in the Williams. So the Williams have really come on, and Alex Albon has really come on as a driver. And um, Aston Martin this year, although they're struggling, well they're in fifth and sixth right now. Um, Rand Lance Stroll is uh, he's shown uh, quite a bit of improvement the last couple of races and we're just watching um, Lewis Hamilton no George Russell uh, trying to get past um, the trying to get past uh, Kevin Magnussen in the Haas and uh, he does it by outbreaking him uh, so that's a that's another thing um, a lot of people don't realize that that a, a lot of ways to win races in these cars is not to just drive them very fast, but know exactly what type of grip you've got on your car. So then you can brake much later than your opponent. So as you come up to the corner, you can gain two, three car lengths as uh, George Russell just did right then on uh, Kevin Magnussen and pushing Magnussen back to 12th and Russell has moved up to 11th. So that uh, braking is a very big, big part of Formula One, not just uh, acceleration and going fast. So, um, so we've got um, we've got some of the drivers now uh, asking their teams if they think the track is going to dry out, um, and it, and it is in places. You can see uh, watching on the TV screens here. You can see in some parts of the track the uh, the, the spray coming up for for these cars is almost zero, like right now. But other places, there's there's still a very good uh, very good amount of water coming up and we've just seen Magnuson now fighting um, fighting uh, Russell back for that position and as he's doing that he's, he's doing it in a very very wet place on the track and he's going to take George Russell right here Russell had to go out wide Magnuson got in so in that particular place Magnuson outbraked George Russell and took his position back so Russell was back um, in uh, <clears throat> and um no no i'm sorry he 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 lost it back again <clears throat> excuse me but we'll have a sip of tea that'll kind of help with the uh with the um the allergies that i suffer from in this particular little room okay so uh let's see we're 11 laps in so we're nearly halfway through this race and um, in some ways, I, I would say very disappointing for tomorrow because uh, Max Verstappen has got a, now a, a really an eight second lead um, on Hulkenberg and he's got a um, nine second lead uh, on Perez. Now, Perez uh, has made time up on Hulkenberg, so we may see in Hulkenberg right here. In fact, we're watching it right now. Um, Perez is challenging Hulkenberg. He'll have him. Um, at the next DRS zone, so um, it's some nice driving uh, by Perez to to get this position back. Uh, Hulkenberg is hanging on, um, and uh, George Russell. In fact, uh, Hamilton now has pushed Magnussen back to the thirteenth position. Let's see. Uh, Ma the team is asking Max for um, uh, his idea on tires, and he's saying, "Let's stay with the intermediates." Um, so we should see, and he's dropped the fastest lap again, and this time it's 115. So we should see Perez right here take Hulkenberg, but he didn't. Uh, Hulkenberg, man, uh, because Perez didn't quite have the grip, we saw his car whittle there as it came out of the chicane. So, um, so the so the, the the track is still dictating to a certain extent, but um, Verstappen is dictating to everybody. I mean, he's just out driving them. Uh, in in this particular uh, weather and the, and the track as it is right now, and uh, Perez is taking another shot at Hulkenberg, and Hulkenberg is managing to hold him off. Uh, Lando Norris is um, taking on Charles Leclerc, uh, and um, 
and Perez just got past Hulkenberg right there. So, uh, it, as I said, it was a matter of time anyway. So now Perez has got himself up into second position, but still 10 seconds behind his teammates. So both Hulkenberg and Perez lost time there on that one. And we're just watching um, Lando Norris battling it out with uh, Charles Leclerc. Uh, they're swapping positions backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Lando Norris has going to try and take that position back from Perez, I mean, sorry, back from uh, Leclerc uh, here um, and on the next DRS zone. So uh, things are starting to get uh, nice and exciting here uh, in this sprint race now. Um, at the bottom end, you know, things are pretty much the same, but in the middle here, the, 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 the cars, so we're going to see Carlos Sainz uh, here in just a moment uh, push Hulkenberg back into the fourth position. He's coming up on him right now. And in fact, he is going to do it. Um, he, Hulkenberg's not going to be able to hang on to this uh, and so now Hulkenberg in a matter of uh, three laps has gone from second to fourth so uh, some nice driving there by Carlos Sainz um, who is two seconds behind two and a half seconds behind Sergio Perez so um, I think you're going to see uh, Verstappen and Perez on pole unless something uh, really happens on the race tomorrow um, and then uh, second row will probably be uh, Sainz and uh, Hulkenberg. Third row is going to be uh, the Aston Martins. They're having a, an all right day, not a great day. They're, they're, they're in fifth and sixth. And what's interesting is uh, Fernando Alonso. Now, it, it may be, you know, team, team uh, instructions that Alonso uh, hang behind Lance Stroll because, uh, uh, in, in fact, Stroll's on the radio right now telling... Uh, to tell uh, Fernando Alonso not to spend any time fighting him so that they don't lose ground to the rest of the field. But, uh, you know, Alonso is a better driver than Lance Stroll. And there's been talk during the week of Lance Stroll losing his seat um, to maybe uh, Sebastian Vettel coming back, the Aston Martin driver that retired last year. But, you know, um, it, it, I, I don't see Daddy getting rid of his son uh, for anything, so I, I think uh, I think and I've said this before. I think he's he's probably got the most secure seat in Formula One, other than uh, Max Verstappen. I mean, uh, his father bought that team so that Lance Stroll could drive in Formula One. So I don't see that uh, I don't see that's that's going to change. So watching watching right now, uh, Charles Leclerc battling Esteban Ocon, um, and he and he's just one one beaten Esteban Ocon out. Um, for eighth place and, Ar and Archon's just taking it back again so this is why folks watch Formula One is because these battles um, that go on and on and they'll go on like this you know for sometimes for, for 10 and 15 laps and um, and it just it just depends really especially on a day like today who's got who's got the more nerve when it comes to braking because that's that's where all the difference is made is is during the braking um, because the acceleration for these cars is going to be about the same, but the how how much grip that driver feels he's getting out of those tires, and how he feels he can get that car through the corner. Because braking is all about coming up to the corner as fast as you can. Um, and like I said, they'll make two to three car lengths uh, up on braking uh, to to do that. We're just watching we're just watching Norris again um, out braking uh, Leclerc. And uh, we got Esteban Arcon and Charles Leclerc fighting it out. Leclerc just sw switching to the inside. He's got a slightly better acceleration than Esteban Arcon, but Arcon just right there just outbraked him for the next turn. So took took the lead back again. So um, this this is some really really good stuff. And remember, folks, the G forces these guys have inside these cars is incredible. So um, you know, being able to being able to keep control. Uh, of these cars while fighting for positions is really is really tough and uh, Charles uh, I'm sorry George Russell just came on and said he doesn't see uh, the possibility for slicks and right there um, Charles Leclerc lost it uh, to Lando Norris and Norris took that position back when I say he lost it and, and that is that the car didn't quite have the grip that he expected it to have and he had to go really wide on the corner and of course that gave then Lando Norris the, the opportunity to take it back and now we've got uh, George Russell coming in is he is he going to change to the 
to the slick tires. That's going to be interesting because he's all the way down in 19th position now. So, um, and we saw it right there, Lando Norris uh, having to protect his position. We've got another fastest lap out of um, out of uh, Verstappen. Verstappen now has a 11.2 second lead on his teammate. So you can see those two guys have pretty much the same car and. Um, now that oh so they're just now saying they've got DR and DRS enabled so that so they must have been racing without DRS. I thought that the DRS would had come in on lap three or four. Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw that pop up on the screen, but they must have must have been uh, either an error on the on the part of the the uh, the guys that are running the video, or um, there was an error on the part of me no it can't be that no it could be, could have been I, I but i'm pretty sure i saw that but anyway um they're, they're, they've come back and i'm i'm watching the two mercedes right now with the drs enabled and just pushing hulkenberg is it hulkenberg magnuson so they just pushed magnuson back um lance stroll uh in the aston martin um is now up into fourth place so he just put uh, as i mentioned earlier it wouldn't be long before that he would put Hulkenberg back and, and Lando Norris is about to shove Hulkenberg back as well. So that'll move the uh, the two Aston Martins up into fourth and fifth position. Um, so uh, Stroll is five seconds behind uh, Sainz. I don't see him making that up. Um, and, uh, and, and like I said, Alonso is going to move past um, Hulkenberg here in just a moment. Uh, Lando Norris is maintaining his position ahead of Charles Leclerc, Charles something. Charles Leclerc has not had had some good drives of late. I mean, he's all the way back in tenth position and probably the, the second or third best car out there. Now the the team has just come in and told Hulkenberg to pit. Are they going to put him on slick tires? What would be the point? Six laps to go. He's going to lose so many positions um, that uh, he's it's going to drop in. Yeah, it's going to drop him all the way back out to. 10th or 11th position and and they have and whoops they put they put him on slicks and he nearly lost it in the pits and they've just put uh they've just put hamilton uh on slicks um so i i don't think that's a very good move with uh, six laps to go because they've got way too many seconds to make up and, and with the track still being really wet in some places they're gonna have to slow down to incredibly slow speed so um, I, yeah, I, 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 now, you know, I'm sitting in my living room here, just uh, actually in my little podcast room. I'm sitting in my podcast room, kind of, uh, doing a live podcast on this. I'm not sitting on trackside, making all these, all these decisions. So, um, you know, uh, I'm, uh, what do they call it here in the United States? An armchair quarterback. Um, so, so certainly I'm being an armchair quarterback, but, uh, let's see, we've got the two Mercedes back in 14th and 15th. So let's see where they finish. We've got five laps to go. Um, so let's see uh, where they're finishing. It's just showing the time that George Russell against Max Verstappen on the, on the slicks. He's losing half a second, a lap to, um, to that. And Lance Stroll has just come out and said, no, just stay on the intermediates. We've got the Ferrari of um, Charles Leclerc that is going on to the slicks. You know, with, with, you know, if this was a full race of 70-something laps, you know, I could see this. But with now we have five laps left to go. Um, I don't see, I don't see it going. Now, George Russell just pulled in the fastest lap at 112. But um, there's still uh, Max Verstappen had the, the next fastest lap at 113. So let's say he makes up, let's say he makes up two seconds a lap. He is, um, he, he would have to, and let's see where he is. He's in 10th position, seven. He's probably 20, 25 seconds back of, of uh, Perez and uh, Verstappen. Well, Verstappen's got 15 seconds on Perez. So, uh, you know, you know, Verstappen's not coming in. He's, he's got pole position all wrapped up. Perez is not coming in. I don't think, I don't think the Aston Martins are call a sign. So at the end of the day, um, the, uh, the Mercedes were in, I think, uh, eighth or ninth, ninth and tenth. And right now they're in 10th and 13th, um, with four laps to go. So, uh, they're going to get themselves ahead probably of, uh, of, well, that, so they, 
they're not going to make much. It's not going to be much at all because they're, they're 15, 8, 16 seconds behind Gasly. Um, and Hulkenberg has just taken up uh, uh, past Gasly. That's really interesting. Um, but um, I just don't see them uh, making up uh, the, 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 the number of seconds they are behind uh, now with, uh, with, like I said, four laps to go. But... So we've still we've got uh, Russell on soft, Hamilton on soft, Piastri on soft, uh, Sunodo on soft, and there was one other. There. I think it was uh, De Vries on soft, and all the right, all the rest. When I say soft, so that's soft slicks. All the rest are on. Um, all the rest are on uh, uh, intermediate wets. So um, uh, I, I I think it makes for very interesting racing and interesting for the fans. That's great. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're watching, we're watching the battles here for slicks and wets and it's on the wet part of the track. So, you know, uh, you know, who wins that battle, the slicks have to back off because they, they have, you know, no grip on a wet road. So they got to wait until they get to the dry part of the track to get through. And, and, and um, as, uh, uh, Charles Leclerc is just showing there, they're getting to the, the, they're getting to the, to the dry part of the, the track. Um, and um, and they, they 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 make good time, but then they've got to slow down really slow uh, to uh, to get to it. So George Russell just pulled in the fastest lap at one eleven. But remember, uh, during it, what what I said at the beginning of the race, what I was expecting one eleven, one twelve, or one twelve, one thirteen on the intermediate. So uh, there's uh, three laps to go. Uh, Verstappen is open, opening up right now a one and a half, two second gap on his teammate Perez in second place. Uh, Carlos Sainz now has dropped back from Perez, and we've got uh, we've got the uh, two Aston Martins in fourth and fifth position. So you can pretty much guarantee that that's pretty, that's going to be um, the way the 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 the, the top the four the four uh, positions up front. Whoops, and to George Russell. Just about completely lost it going coming out of that out of that turn. He gets under the dry part of the track and he and he goes fine. But now they're going to show him here trying to take this turn and it's you know on on a uh, on a on a wet road they've got to slow down um, uh, to really really slow to to get through the turns. Otherwise they just spin off the track. Um, takes me back to a race last year when Lando Norris was actually leading the race. And it started to rain with about three laps to go. And, and he wanted to stay out and he did stay out. Um, but everybody else dived into the pits for tires and he didn't. And he and it was like his car was on an ice rink. And, and by the time, the, by the, time the, the next lap had come around, he was actually a lap down. So uh, the, the, the tires make a huge difference. There's no doubt about it. But in a, in, if any part of the track, like this track, you've probably got half of it wet. I'm watching the cars right now throwing up a lot of water. I'm watching Stroll and Alonso. And, and so certain part of the track is throwing up a lot of water. Other parts of the track is dry. Um, and if you remember the, at the, the beginning, I said, as these cars uh, go around and around and they throw this water up, the track does die, dry out. But in some places, it was just too wet. And it may have been that in some places on the track, you know, that, uh, that, that they got some more rain. Um, I, I didn't see it uh, uh, on the TV, but that doesn't mean to say it, doesn't, it, it wasn't happening because there was so much spray coming up from the cars that it's hard to tell whether it was raining or not raining. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to watch, um, we're going to watch, uh, it's uh, Leclerc, Leclerc driving past, trying to get past, in, in fact, uh, he does get uh, past uh, uh, Piastri. So um, right now we've got, uh, something's got to be wrong with, uh, with Sergio Perez. We're on the last lap, okay? We're on the last lap, and um, we have uh, Verstappen now 20 seconds, going to be 21 seconds before the end of the race, ahead of Perez, Carlos Sainz, Lance Stroll, um, and Alonso, and then Ocon. So there's your top three rows. At the bottom end, um, you've, got, uh, you've got Tsunoda, Sargent, De Vries, Bottas, and Joe Granu. Um, and then in the middle... Uh, the Mercedes uh, of Russell and um, and Hamilton, uh, you, you know, so they got the fastest lap, but they've got nothing else. 
Uh, they, all of that tire changing, like I said, made no difference at all, really. They ended up uh, in the same positions. And the, and, the, and the reason, of course, was they were so far behind anyway. Um, so they, it also could be strategy for tomorrow. They could be looking at um, how they how their cars are going to uh, react and drive, uh, assuming that we get a dry day tomorrow. I don't know that we will, but we are watching Alonso take it, go, go past his teammate Lance Stroll, which his teammate asked him not to do, but, uh, he's done it. And, uh, and now Alonso has taken over and Stroll is trying to fight back, but, uh, it didn't, it didn't work. Uh, uh, Alonso's too good, too good a driver and too, um, too good a, uh, um, uh, too, I mean, too much experience to really fall for that one. So uh, we're going to we, we, we've got the cars now. Verstappen has come in uh, and and at, in first place, a full twenty one seconds ahead of his teammate, and then uh, and then it's Perez, Sainz, uh, Stroll, Alonso, Hulkenberg. So those are your top three rows uh, for tomorrow. Um, and uh, it, it, here's. Uh, so something interesting. Russell did manage to make up one more position. He got past Lando Norris, who was still on the intermediates. But uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, I think the tire change was really just to um, just to really see how the cars are going to act tomorrow, assuming that it's going to be on a dry road. So the one thing we haven't had a chance to do today is thank our sponsors. Uh, we do want to thank Thenology at Thenology.com and we want to thank uh, Moms for Liberty, MomsforLiberty.org and uh, Give, Send, Go um, uh, for, uh, for the, at GiveSendGo.com uh, for their sponsorship. Um, as this is our very first live stream, uh, of course, uh, we, we've got to get used to managing the time better. But uh, all in all, I hope it's been a, a very interesting uh, morning for you all. Um, and, it, and you can get the race again tomorrow live. We'll be doing this so you can watch the race on ESPN and then listen to, to uh, 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 watch and listen to this uh, live stream podcast from the Formula One News Hour, because you know I'm obviously much better than those professionals that uh, that uh, that are on there on Sky Sports. Uh, not, of course, but still, I, I I hope I give a different perspective, and um, and we'd like to thank our producer and technical all things technical guru Andre Kuhn, um, and um, and again, thank you to all our sponsors, Thenology at Thenology.com. Give, send, go at givesendgo.com and Moms for Liberty at momsforliberty.org. So until tomorrow, this is Jonathan Steele saying thank you for joining us this morning and look forward to doing our first live full race tomorrow morning and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your day.